Fair test. What's up, dummies? I know you don't think you're smarter than me, dog. You? What? Fair test. You hate on my channel, but you love my channel, brother. Fair test. Give you the truth, you know that. Once you hear, you can't go back. Giving you info proper. That's because I'm a doctor. Yeah. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGNGM. Praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Y'all know what time it is. The doctor's in the house. Dr. Boxer talking the building. Y'all know we keep it real. We keep it funky. We keep it street around here, man. Unbiased, unfiltered news. So I've been hearing a lot of stuff. I've been seeing a lot of stuff that's very disturbing to me. So I want to address it. I'm going to be talking with a lot of passion in this video now. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just very passionate about what I feel and what I believe because I believe as, 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 as a boxing channel that I am. I know I'm fairly new. I appreciate the support, but I feel like I owe it to you all to give you the truth the unbiased unfiltered truth man this video right here i'm telling you right now this video is not because i like ryan garcia it's not because i like devin haney it's not because i dislike devin haney it's not because i dislike ryan garcia but i love the truth and i love boxing so i feel like it's my responsibility to get out the truth and break it down as simply as as simply as i can and 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 be very meticulous and thorough because my name is dr boxing talk a lot of people ask me this when they come to my channel are you really a doctor yes I'm really a doctor. I'm a research scientist. I'm a research scientist. I have my PhD, which is my doctor's in philosophy, my doctorate degree in, in, in engineering, mechanical slash sustainable energy engineering with a focus in thermodynamics and heat transfer. Damn! I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to tell you that I, I'm very meticulous and thorough with my work. I'm very meticulous and thorough with my work. I do my due diligence and I'm not always right. I'm not always right. I'll say it once again. I don't want to know everything. I do not know everything. But... I try my best to be correct. And I think that we all should do that. Instead of trying to prioritize being first, we should prioritize being correct. And I see a lot of misinformation out there because some people are manipulating the narrative or they're trying or, or they have a personal relationship with, with, with one of the fighters or, or, or they just like the fighter more than they like the other. That's wrong, man. T report the truth, man. And if you don't know, it's okay not to know. But the point is, it's, it's, not, it's not a problem when you don't know something. It's a problem when you don't know something, but you act like you do. A wise man knows what he does it, 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 a wise man does not know everything but a fool pretends that they do you know what i'm saying a fool pretends that he does and that's not right you know what i'm saying so i just want to come in i'm, I'm debunking a lot of theories I, I, i'm gonna I, I expose a lot a lot of these folks so like i said uh, this i'm not i'm gonna get passionate about it because a lot of people come to my stream and they ask me these questions and i and i break it down for you and i'm very unbiased and i don't care about uh, somebody looking bad or looking good I want the truth to be out And a lot of these channels, man They have no integrity They don't know what they're saying They're ignorant, uneducated to, to the topic that they're speaking on And, they, and they're and they acting like they know what they're talking about Particularly because they have a camera in their face and, and they speak with conviction And they speak loudly And that they think that makes them more right No, educate yourself about the topic Or just leave it alone Or just say, oh I want this person to look this way or I don't want this person to look this way and let us know out the gate. At least you'll get respect. But when they come off saying that they're telling the truth, they have no clue what they're talking about. So I'm here to debunk this hair follicle testing situation and this urine analysis situation with Ryan Garcia. Let's get right to it. It's going to be quite, a, the video is going to be quite long. So I, I'm asking you to watch the whole thing so that you'll be educated as well. And then you'll understand what I'm, the, 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 the message I'm trying to convey. I appreciate y'all. Let's get right to it, man. Watch the whole video. All right, so let me walk y'all through this, man. I'm gonna walk y'all through this as, as, as swiftly as I can. You know, I, I like to talk fast, so you better keep up. You know what I'm talking about? So let's get right, man. Don't catch up, keep up. You know what I'm talking about? So let's go, man. So Osterine is a substance in question. It's the banned PED, performance enhancing drug that's in question if, when it comes to Ryan Garcia. So let's start from the very beginning, man. Osterine right here. Now, I'm gonna keep it on the screen now so you can see. Osterine is a selective androgen receptor modulator that attaches to proteins in the body and effectively tells muscles to grow. It is used to aid performance by helping athletes build muscle mass and enhance their rate of fat loss and also to increase stamina and recovery ability. Basically what it's saying is gonna help the, the athlete gain more lean muscle. That's what is gonna help everybody who has this in their system. So let's go to Ryan Garcia and what the test found where he tested positive. So let's see right here. This says 
NYSAC's chart of allowable limits of PEDs, right? So this is the New York State Athletic Commission's chart of allowable limits for P P PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, says Austrian has a 0.1 nanogram per millimeter allowable limit. Clear as day right here, right here, right? One, let me see so y'all can see it, I'm sorry. 0.1 nanograms per millimeter allowable limit. That's the thing right there, right? Ryan Garcia reported six NGs per milliliter, six nanograms per milliliter, which is 60 times the limit. That's 60 times over the limit. So before you say, but it's a billionth of a gram, it's a billionth of the gram, what does that mean? That's so small, it's undetectable. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you idiot, a billionth of a gram is a nanogram. The symbol for nanogram is NG. Why am I? Why is that important? Because you come back right here, and it says Osterine is at NG nanograms. Nanograms NG per milliliter. He was at six. That means he was sixty times over the limit. That means he was at 0. 0.6 nanograms. Per milliliter and why is that important because then you come and check it right we're going to cross reference with the new york state athletic commission since i got to break it down for y'all that come in a lot with a, that they're that, that, that spewing a lot of fake news out there and a lot of narratives shame on you for misleading the people but that's why i'm here i'm the doctor i'm very meticulous and thorough you know what i'm saying i do my due diligence i do it often i do it well so let's look at here osterine right which is called enoborosarm right here enobosarm and Borsarm, aka Osterine, which is clear as day right here. The decision limits, according to the New York uh, State Athletic Commission, NYSAC, it is abnormal at levels greater than 0.1 nanograms per milliliter. So once again, this is consistent. The rules are right there. You know what I'm saying? And it's a billionth of a gram. So before you say, oh, a billionth of a gram doesn't mean anything, you don't know what a billionth of a gram does because you're not educated in this field or this expertise. So stop pretending. That's why you're misleading people. You know what I'm saying? And let, 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 let's go further now. So that's a billionth of a gram. We already ironed that out. But guess what? Guess what I also wanted to show you? When you test, when when they test um um these things, right? There's a certain process that they have, right? Once again, we know that Osterine is a selective androgen receptor modulator, aka SARM, S-A-R-M, selective androgen receptor modulator. Why is that important? I'm going to show you right now. We come here to a scholarly paper. Why do I trust these scholarly articles? Because I wrote quite a few uh, scholarly art articles and scholastic journals in my profession be when I get in my PhD. So I wrote a lot of these papers, so I trust them. Nothing would be published if it didn't have some type of novelty or some type of truth to it. So let's read right here. Selective androgen receptive modulators, which are SARM, which is what Osterine is. It's, 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 uh, so so Oster, Osterine is, is, is a form of selective androgen receptor modulators, right? So it says, SARMs are a class of drugs presenting identical anabolic properties to usual anabolic steroids, aka, like they give you a list, like testosterone, like stenolazole, or sorry, stenolazole, sorry, nandrolone, etc. In addition to marked reduced androgenic effects, these drugs have emerged in the doping area within the 2000s, the early 2000s. Ligrandrol and Osterine, coincidentally, and RAD140 and Andorine are the most popular agents belonging to this class. So Osterine is one of the more popular SARMs that, that belong to this class, right? So let's keep reading. According to the World Anti-Doping Agency, aka WADA, not VADA, because VADA submits to WADA, According to the World Anti-Doping Agency prohibited list, which I just showed you for the New York State Athletic Commission, SARMs or SARMs are prohibited at all times. Not sometimes, not a little bit of the times, not a few of the times, not most of the times, all times. Example, i.e. in and out of competition. They are prohibited in and out of competition and are listed under section S1.2 of their other anabolic agents, a section that also contains clenbuterol. Hmm. Now we looking at cinnamon, you know what I'm talking about? But cinnamon was, you know what I'm saying? He, we, we, we already, we already, we already, uh, that case has already been closed with my, 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 my boy Canelo. So leave Canelo out of this. Okay. So the compilation of the WADA testing figures reports from 2015 to 2019 has indicated a regular 
increase of adverse analytical findings, which is AAF, adverse analytical findings due to SARMs, particularly with Osterine and Ligandrol. The imp implementation of highly sensitive chromatographic anti-doping analysis has induced high profile challenges uh, anti-doping rules violations that athletes have claimed in numerous occasions that contamination was the reason for their AAF, meaning they're blaming contamination of other supplements for the reason why they have adverse uh, analytical findings or their, AA or their AAF. And this is where it's important because remember, Ryan Garcia was talking about testing his hair follicles to 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 supersede uh, of the results of the urine analysis, right? As a result, hair tests were presented in order to establish the circumstances of these AAFs. In case of an adverse an analytical finding, which is an AAF, hair testing can be a complement to a document. Sorry, to, to hair testing can be a complement to document the claim of the athlete, but of course, the results should not be considered as an alternative to urine analysis. <laughs> Once again, sorry, I, 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 just, I just actually clicked on something else. Sorry, once again, so you, so you can see this. It says the result should not be considered as an alternative to urine analysis. Why is that important? Now, why is that? Why would they, why would they emphasize that? I'll tell you why. This is because a negative hair result cannot exclude the use of a detective drug and cannot overrule the urine result. So it cannot overrule the urine result. You're like, why? Why can't they use the hair? Because the hair lasts longer and detects more. Well, I'll tell you right now. I'll break that down to you as well. So right here. All you had to do is simply Google the best way to detect SARMs in humans, which is Osterine is part of the SARMs, right? So let's click right here. Let's click right here. According to the National Library of Medicine, right? It's already highlighted for us conveniently. It, this is because a negative hair or nail result cannot exclude the use of detected drug and cannot overrule the urine result. Why? Because to date, all methods of SARMs identification in various matrices involve liquid chromatography what? or chromatography what? or let me say one more game chromatography okay. you know coupled to tandem mass spectrometry or high resolution mass spectrometry so you're like what is what is liquid chromatography huh what does that mean that means that they need something with liquid aka urine analysis and you can't do liquid chromatography with hair you cannot do that in your hair because hair is not a liquid you fucking idiot that's why you cannot replace that's why the hair follicle testing cannot replace the urine analysis because it's not a liquid and the best way to detect SARMs and, and Osterine, which is one of the SARMs, is by liquid chromatography coupled to tandem mass spectrometry. <laughs> okay, okay, so what I said is partially true and partially not true. So it's, you know what I'm saying? But for those of you that are smart, you might have thought you got me. But no, come on now, I'm a thinker now. So the reason why I said that about the, about the, um liquid chromatography you know and, and the hair versus the urine analysis is because ryan garcia as you know with the hair follicle their legal team has 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 has, has dropped this on us right it says ryan garcia is, is committed to clean and fair competition yada 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 it says uh it says that uh ryan voluntarily had his hair collected and shipped to dr Pascal Kintz, the foremost expert in toxicology and hair sample analysis, right? The results of Ryan's hair sample came back negative. This is consistent with contamination and demonstrably proves that Ryan Garcia had not ingested Austrian over a period of time. Okay, so now this is where, remember I told you about the microdosing, whatever, and, and but but not even that, right? With the microdosing not being so, with, 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 with the Austrian being not so easily detectable, I want to show you this, hair testing 101, and this is where it comes in, where I said that hair is not a liquid, because in order to liquefy hair, which is obviously a process that you could do, I want to show you this, man. Not all hair tests involve liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry. Remember, these are two of the most crucial and best and most effective ways of detecting Osterine and other SARMs. That's why this is important and that's why you cannot indeed omit the urine analysis for the follicle, hair follicle analysis. That is why, man. And guess this out. And check this out. 
Check this out, man. Some laboratories have been guilty of not performing the second test and declaring a presumptive positive for the substance, which later turned out to be incorrect, which is another reason why you cannot omit the hair follicle testing for the urine analysis. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, once again, I want to even further, further um, emphasize this point by looking right here, man. I want to show you this right here. A, a, a hair drug test can give a highly accurate reading as to whether drugs are in an individual system. But for an accurate interpretation of the positive result, let me show you so y'all can see me, sorry. We need to know as much as possible about the person's previous drug use or anything that may affect the test. And guess what? If they've been, if they've been too apart, surrounded by cannabis users, what? what? What do you do? I drink and I smoke weed, and so has the majority of this room. For instance, or other external factors which will help build the picture of the individual. It says, for this reason, right here, the partly conducting the test, the party, excuse me, conducting the test must inform their laboratory of the context. Previous cases have seen donors being accused and acquitted of drug use because of laboratory, because the laboratory performing the test was unaware of the conditions of the hair. For example, whether the donor had recently bleached their hair or shared a living space with another user. All these things could contaminate the hair follicle testing results. And also, I want to show you one more thing. Not all hair tests involve, oh, I, already, I already read that, sorry, excuse me, that was another part I wanted to tell you, wanted, wanted to show you, uh, it's right here, the hair sample is purified using a chemical process called solid phase extraction, which removes unwanted substances, but retains the drugs and metabolites, yes, and then it's passed through an absorbent material under pressure, this is called the liquid, this is the liquid chromatography part, however, However, when we receive the hair sample in our lab, it is washed to remove chemical deposits on the outside of the hair. Once washed, the hair is disintegrated via chemical and mechanical processes to form a paste or liquefied hair. So when I told you that a hair, your hair follicles is not liquid, it has to be liquefied. But the urine analysis already has all these things. So that's why it's the more accurate form of detecting Osterine and other SARMs. That's why you cannot replace it and it does not supersede or supplant the results in a urine analysis. Do you get it now? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Do you understand? And once again, I also wanted to highlight this right here. This is a chart right here that detects urine analysis and it measures in what and what, it, 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 in, dang, I'm stuttering up. What the hell does that even mean? What you getting at with the book script? Spit that shit out, man. <laughs> How is it denoted? How is it measured? What units of metrics is it used to measure it? It's in nanograms per milliliter. Once again, nanograms per milliliter. So when you hear a billionth of a gram, you think it's minuscule and it's small because you don't understand the significance or the capacity of what's being measured. You're not an expert, so that is significant. That is very much significant, man. So we need to stop acting like we're experts. Stop listening to these people that are the, that are just saying this information. So not only in this day and age, because of the internet, we have to consider the information that's being presented to us. We also have to consider heavily the person that's presenting the information because a lot of times they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? There's a saying, I'm gonna end it with this. Wise men, they know that they don't know everything. But fools, fools pretend that they do. So wise men know that they don't know everything, but fools pretend that they do. And that's a problem, man. All you have to do is do your due diligence. It's simple, man. So all these people that are saying, oh, this hair test means that that that, that Ryan Garcia is, is, is gonna get off and the urine analysis is incomplete or the urine analysis is, is false or, or, or inconclusive, that's a freaking lie. And that is simply not true. Now, that doesn't mean that, um. That doesn't mean that Ryan Garcia won't get off because of contamination. He can still get off because a maybe su a supplement was contaminated or maybe it was ingested unintentionally by him. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that's why I was in the system. But this does not by any means discredit the urine analysis and mean that that's not real. It's in his system because hair follicles, they're not liquids and it's not the best way to detect SARMs. And Osterine is one of a, is, 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 is an H, is an S-A-R-M. You see what I'm saying? And what's the S-A-R-M? Let's go back to it. A S-A-R-M is a selective androgen receptor modulator 
which Osherine is one of and is best detected through liquid chromatography, which we've seen right here. Boring. So yes, that's why you should sub to me because I am unbiased. I'm not saying that this is good news. Once again, I think this is bad news for the state of boxing because it's dis it, it lowers the integrity of boxing. I like Ryan Garcia once again, but I do not like anybody to the point where I'm gonna excuse cheating. And I don't dislike the Haynes enough to where I want them to lose because someone's cheating. So whether you like it or not, if it's in Ryan Garcia's system, that means he's cheating by definition of it being present. It doesn't mean that he did it intentionally. It doesn't mean that there's a, 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 an excessive amount. It doesn't say how effective it would be to help him that fight night. But the fact that it ex exceeds the, the, uh, the allowable threshold, by, by 60 times the allowable limit, then please believe that that means it had some type of impact on his body to help him in the fight. Does that mean that he needed it to win? I don't think he needed it to win, but it doesn't change the fact that he still cheated. And we will never know because what the results that we saw was a result of him cheating. You see, or him having it in his system. So, and there's a thing called microdosing. So when you microdose and, and with this stuff that is found in the urine analysis with the Osterine, it's a little excessive amounts. That's why it's so minuscule that it's so minuscule of an allowable limit because just because it's a small amount that's detected that leaks into your urine analysis, that doesn't mean that that's the only thing that's in your system because it attaches to the fat. Of, of, like, like I said, it attaches to the proteins of these selective androgen receptor modulators. So a lot of it doesn't get loose. So please do your due diligence. If not, come to me. That's why I'm a doctor. I'm here for you, baby. I'm going to get you right. This has nothing to do with not liking Ryan Garcia. This has nothing to do with not liking Devin Haiti. This has everything to do with the truth. And a lot of these simpletons are just spewing this information like it's the truth. And they have no clue what they're talking about. They're completely ignorant to the topic at hand. And instead of trying to educate themselves, they're just going off what they think and what sounds good. So all those channels, I'm, 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 please, I'm telling y'all as 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 people that absorb this information and depend on these people to give you accurate information, stop depending on them. I'll get you right. You know what I'm saying? We keep it real. We keep it funky. We keep it street. And I have a PhD. Yeah. So I might not be a phlebotomist. I don't deal with blood or, or urine or fecal matter, but I do deal with common sense, integrity, being meticulous and thorough and due process and doing your due diligence. I firmly believe in that. That's how I got my degrees. You know what I'm saying? In engineering. Sustainable energy engineering with a focus on heat transfer and thermodynamics. I do my due diligence. I do a lot of testing and I know about lab work and the importance of knowing things instead of just guessing things. So that's what I want to tell you all right now. I'm sorry that I get hype a little bit. I'm not yelling at anybody in particular, but I do think it's very important for us not to purposefully mislead people or manipulate a narrative because we like or dislike somebody. That is wrong, man. And that is why society as a whole is lost, especially with the internet, because people don't prioritize being correct. They prioritize being first. It doesn't matter if they're wrong. So yeah, man, y'all be easy, stay blessed. Remember, with God, we can do anything. Without God, we are nothing. Peace. Love y'all. Don't forget to like the video. And stop listening to these donkeys. Also, lastly, before I forget to it, more importantly, I want to shout out Clone and Kendrick, man. They're supporters of the channel. They're the ones that told me, they, 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 they encouraged me and convinced me to, to, to make this breakdown because I wasn't going to do it because I, I really, I'm really annoyed with the situation, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to be over with, you know, but they were like, no, you got to let people know about, you know, putting in work and doing the due diligence and helping us understand. So shout out to them for encouraging me to drop this video, man. You know what I'm saying? I really appreciate that. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets